Good afternoon, and welcome to another episode of Condo Insider. Uh, my name is Jane Sugimura, and I'm your host. And this is a show for uh, people who live in condos or work or have anything to do with condominiums. And uh, my guest today uh, is uh, Raylene Tenno, and she's the program uh, director for Hawaii Council of Association of Apartment Owners. And thank you for coming to uh, be on our show today. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. And, you know, today's topic, and this is, this is a topic that creates a lot of angst amongst, uh, you know, uh, our, 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 our constituents, which are, you know, a, a sport, uh, associations and people who live in condominiums, and that's pets and condos. And, and, and there are people who would say, well, you know, you can't call them pets. Uh, because they are, uh, what is it? The comfort. S- uh, comfort animals or service, or s- animals. Uh, service animals. And that's what we're going to be discussing today. You know, wh- why, why is this big issue uh, with um, uh, pets and condos? And we're going to, the Hawaii Council is going to have a seminar on November 14th. Correct. And this is one of the things that are going to be discussed. Yes, right? it is. Um, pets and service animals. Right. And why don't you just... Tell me in a nutshell, what seems to be the controversy? Why is this a big deal? Well, you know, you have these condos that were built originally like in the 70s or 80s, and they were built as no pet buildings. But as time has gone on, you have some people that are, well, I have a dog. I want my dog here. And full disclosure, Jane, I have dogs. So, I mean, I'm, and I'm still, you know, complying with what I need to do. But... Um, some, I mean, some people just don't get it. that It's a no-pet building. And there's reasons why it's a no-pet building. It was originally done as a no-pet building. Um, and, you know, some people are want it on the board or current owners want it to remain as a no-pet building. And how- then you can amend your bylaws. And some buildings, like my building, we amended our bylaws maybe 20 years ago. Uh, to do have no pets, mm-hmm. and so that was by sixty seven percent of the owners at that time, right. and so we have a we our building has a no pets policy right and so if that's you know if, if you have buildings who have no pet policies, why is there this issue about having pets in condos so you know it, it's it's people that are renting and it, and it's the the property managers or the realtors. You know, they really want it. They have a fit duty to get it rented for the for the investor owner. So they try to get just essentially anybody, you know, so. Um, so it's a matter of educating our, our owners. Right. Yeah. It, you know, it's a no pet building. It's in the docks. Even when you purchase it, you have you're you're obligated as a buyer to look over those documents. Even the realtor is obligated to look over those documents of the building that she's selling. She has a fiduciary duty to disclose that information. To her buyer. And, you know, there are reasons why people, why, why you know, you have a no pets building. Because some people, when they, uh, you know, decide to buy a unit in a condominium or rent a unit in the condominium, I mean, they ask questions and, and, and some people on purpose look for buildings that have no pets. Correct. Right? Good. Because yeah. they might have allergies. You have people who are afraid of dogs or don't want to live in a building where you have animals making noises, barking right. and meowing right. and, 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 and whatnot. And, and so they choose to Correct. live in a building with no pets. Correct. So it's kind of irritating to them. Uh, and, and, you know, I know I sit on a board and, and you know, we get these re- requests for reasonable accommodations. We'll, we'll get to later. And, you know, it's like, it's very irritating. It's like, <laughs> we are a no pets building. Why are we, why are we allowing pets it in is, our it's, building? It's very irritating. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, and, and, and I agree. And I think there are enough buildings in town, right, that are, I mean, you can go to the Humane Society, they give you a list of pet-friendly buildings, and you can go on the Internet. And that's one of the things that are listed as uh, one of the benefits of living in that particular building. It'll say we're pet-friendly, Correct. right? Correct. So, so people with pets, if they want to live in a condominium, they're, I mean, it's not like they can't find buildings that are pet-friendly. Correct. And so they should respect the fact that some buildings don't want pets and, uh, you know, uh, look, you know, uh, don't look kindly on people who have pets and come into their building. And and that's what, you know, uh, you know, I, I'm hearing from you know, some people, you know, who ask for reasonable accommodations and they think that, oh, well, you know, my neighbors hates me. 
you know, or my neighbor gives me dirty looks. And it's <laughs> like, well, you know, uh, we, we are no pets building. And, and so, you know, that's, I think, to be expected because, you know, the, the question to me is why are we allowing these animals in the building? So why are we allowing the animals in the building? You know, you have, you, you have the people that have comfort animals or assistance animals or therapy animals. You know. Well, let's, let's talk about the ones that are okay. Okay. The service, service animals. Service animals. Right? Everybody agrees that under federal and state law, you can have a service animal. Correct. Because they're specially trained. Yes. And, 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 and you know, we, I want to you know, make the statement now. There is no federal or Hawaii state registry or certification for service animals. Correct. So people who go out on the Internet and they buy these certificates and the jackets with the logos that say service animals, that stuff is bogus. And we all know it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and for people who, who who come and try to do that, I mean, we tell them very nicely uh, that there is no registry, there is no certification for a service animal in the state of Hawaii. Thank you very much. What does your animal do? What task does he perform? What does task that, does he the perform? animal perform? Right. Right. Yeah. Which is about the only question you can ask if the disability is not obvious. Correct. Right. Correct. You cannot ask them about their disability at all. Right. And, and usually, you know, with, with the service animals, I mean, th they have a certain demeanor. They are trained. So they're not going to uh, bark or make noise. They're not aggressive. Uh, and they're not going to pee in the lobby uh, and, and, and things like that. And, uh, and so, so that kind of uh, alleviates some of the concerns that people would have. But then you get this whole other category of ser comfort animals, therapy of animals, therapy animals, and uh, what is it? Um, so where do these terms come from? You know, I don't know. I, I think it was someone just started it and it just kind of took off, you know, or some people say I have a dog because he comforts me at night, um, you know, but they're not, they're not real service dogs. But they are recognized up. Uh, well, well, the reason why service animals are allowed in condominiums is because of a federal law called fair housing, right? Correct. And fair housing basically says that you cannot discriminate in housing uh, for persons with disabilities. Correct. And if a, disabil a disabled person needs a service animal to assist them in their daily functions, then you as the association cannot bar that uh, uh, resident right. from having a service animal. And, I, I, and, and, and this is very serious. And so I think everybody recognizes that the service animal is the exception to the no pets rule in a condominium. I think what people are having problems with is the other categories, the comfort, the, uh, the therapy, right. the dogs, and um, the assistance animals, because the definitions surrounding them are so vague. And uh, like in our building, uh, we gave somebody a citation, our, 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 our manager gave somebody a citation for having a pet, <laughs> okay? And they acknowledged that it was their pet. Right. And then the next thing we know, we get a request for reasonable accommodation. Now, the animal has somehow magically become a comfort animal. Because a true service dog or a service or a pony, they're really supposed to even accompany you everywhere. They're with you 24-7. So if you go to work, the dog is supposed to go with you as well. So a comfort animal, people don't bring their animals into the workplace. Normally it's not allowed. Employers mm -hmm. don't allow animals into the workplace. So if you leave it at home, it's not really a true comfort or service dog. You know? mm -hmm. So um, it's a pet. <laughs> right. It's a pet. And, and, and there, there are ways, and, 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 and one of the, I guess, uh, one of the challenges that associations face is there's a, a, an agency in Hawaii called the Civil Rights Commission. And the Civil Rights Commission is tasked in enforcing the fair housing rules. Right. And one of them is discrimination uh, 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 in housing for disabled persons. And disabled persons, they, uh, under the, uh, the commission's definition, is much broader than the fair housing Right, because the, the, the Civil Rights Commission allows for comfort animals. What, which one? I believe it's opposite. 
The fair housing is more broader than the civil rights under the Department of Justice. Okay. Yeah, um, fair housing is a little bit more broader. Okay. Whereas Department of Justice civil rights section, it specifically talks about the service dog mm -hmm. and having it, um, having your um, request for reasonable accommodation done by an authorized um, medical provider, mm -hmm. not just a physician, not an eye doctor. <laughs> Or in, in our case, a, 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 a doctor who lives in yeah. uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, right? Or right. A, a, you know, a report that's maybe five years old, right? But, you right. know, we, we as a board, we get these letters, and under Fair Housing and the Civil Rights, uh, you know, um, Commission Oversight, we are required to allow uh, an animal, uh, a resident, to have an animal if this licensed professional writes and says, basically, I, and I'm paraphrasing, the, the thing is, you know, Jane Doe, who lives in y your building, is my uh, patient or my client. And um, this person has a mental or a physical disability, because mm -hmm. they don't have to describe or name the disability right. under the fair housing. They have a disability, and this animal uh, would relieve some of the symptoms of the disability and we are requesting a reasonable accommodation to allow Jane Doe to have her assistance animal. That's the type of letter we get. And when we get that letter, if it's from a licensed professional and if it's within 90 days, written within 90 days, and if they're in Hawaii, we basically have to say, well, okay, you know, and, and you know, we, we, we approve that accommodation. But when in our building, and I know a lot of buildings who, who, who do this, when we send the letter to the resident saying, we've approved your reasonable accommodation, we put in there, because it's not a service animal, mm -hmm. okay, we put in there, but we have rules about how you have to take care of your dog right. or your cat. And if you don't follow those rules and your animal becomes a nuisance, and in some, some bylaws or some house rules, with there are even like thresholds. Like if you get two complaints or three complaints on the same issue, it constitutes, in other words, you get three complaints about barking. Right. The nuisance. Right. Three complaints where the dog is running loose, not on a leash. Mm -hmm. Right? You right. Know. So th then it becomes a nuisance and you will have to get rid of it. You can't do that with a service animal. We can do it with a comfort animal or an assistance animal. Right. The service animal, they're trained. They're, they're specifically trained. And I believe it takes like a year to train a, a true service animal. Mm -hmm. And normally they're always, they're known and they know to always be leashed. Right. And, and you know, to, to me, I've been around, you know, you know service animals and, and there's, they have a certain demeanor. Yeah. They, they are very docile. They're usually, uh, you know, when, when, when the person who has them they're either, you know, when, when they're lying down and, um, you know, they're under the table or under the chair and they're very quiet. Right. You wouldn't even know that they're around. And, um, but, you know, they, they, they act on commands. They are not aggressive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so, so these are features that, you know, kind of are okay. You know, and so, you know, people, you know, people who, who don't like animals or, might be afraid of animals. They're not afraid of a service animal because a service animal doesn't, you know, show. It's not jumpy. It it, it it's just calm. It just really s stays put. You're right. And 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 so I, I don't think the the concern that is raised by people who live in condos is with service animals. It's this other the other, ca the other, other category. And we'll we'll be talking more about that other category, you know, when we come back. But we're going to take a uh, one minute break now. And then we'll come back and discuss the other category of animals. Okay. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, achieving and sustaining success, and finding greatness. If you're a student, parent, sports or business person, and want to improve your life and the lives of people around you, 
Tune in and join me on Mondays at 11 a.m. as we go beyond the lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha, my name is Duration. You are watching Think Tech Hawaii. I will be hosting a show here every other Wednesday at 1 p.m. and we will be talking to a lot of experts and guests around sustainability, social justice, the future here in Hawaii, progressive politics, and a whole lot more. So please tune in and thank you for watching Think Tech Hawaii. Okay, thank you for uh, joining us after the break. Uh, we're talking to Raylene Tenno. She's the program uh, director for Hawaii Council of Association of Apartment Owners. And we're talking about pets and condos. And uh, the council's having a luncheon seminar, right? November 14th? Correct, at the Halekoa. At the Halekoa. And so we're going to be having, uh, who, who's going to be talking about this topic? We have um, Dennis Perez, who's a psychologist at Triplet Hospital. And also um, assisting him will be um, attorney David Major. And what, they, were, they were involved in a lawsuit recently, right? Correct. It was with the um, Condo and Civil Rights Commission. And so what was the issue? Um, the, the, the tenant or resident had requested for a reasonable accommodation, um, and they had like several dogs, more than one dog. Um, they approved one, but the second one, when the association also in their thing did their due diligence, discovered some of the documents were fraudulent. Oh. They weren't, um, I believe the doctor, they called the doctor and um, the doctor had never seen the patient. I oh. believe that was one of the issues um, with that. Okay, but you know, for the listening audience, this is, you know, and, and we're talking to people who might be concerned uh, if, you know, uh, people who uh, residents, you know, come in with animals that are not service animals. Correct. Because that's where the problem seems to be. And, you know, uh, this is an issue that, that the board needs to deal with with their uh, association general counsel because it involves a lot of legal issues. And so if you're upset or you think, well, geez, you know, maybe we should call the doctor who wrote the letter and ask him a bunch of questions. But before you make that call to the doctor, make sure you call your uh, association general counsel to make sure you're asking the right questions. Right. Because you could get into trouble. Yep. You can get into HIPAA violations. Because <clears throat> he's not supposed to disclose. Right. Because, and you know, you as a layperson don't know, you know, what kind of uh, uh, information a medical professional uh, should be sharing. And, you know, medical, and, uh, and medical information regarding a patient is considered private. Correct. And under state and federal law, I mean, uh, the medical professional cannot discuss it. Right. And with the letters requesting a reasonable accommodation, they're not allowed or they should not talk about what the disability is Correct. that they're Correct. requesting a reasonable accommodation right. for, right? Right. And so, you know, this is an area that's kind of fraught with um, a lot of um, pitfalls. And so, you know, it's not something that somebody who, you know, has no legal training, you know, can navigate without mm -hmm. an attorney. So right. They really should. Right. You really have to keep <laughs> in tune with your attorney on this journey when it comes to animals and what your, what your condo is going to do about, that, about this animal situ growing animal situation. Because the Civil Rights Commission, I mean, that's the boogeyman in the room, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, the Civil Rights Commission is, you know, some, it's, it's a Hawaii agency. And, you know, one of their tasks is to uh, uh, enforce uh, you know, the fair housing rules. And, um, and, you know, one of the things that they do is they do investigations. Correct. They hold hearings uh, and they issue huge fines. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, you can get hit for a fine for $25,000. And, um, and I, I can remember uh, being in a situation like that with our building and we turned it over to our council and our council basically said, just pay it. And it's like, excuse me? <laughs> but, you know, we don't think that it's right. You know, we want to fight it. And they said, well, if you fight it, then you're going to do it without the insurance company. And so we ended up settling with, with, with the Civil Rights Commission. But, you know, it's, 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 it's hard, you know, because they're kind of like the bully in the room. 
Yeah. And, and, and even though, you know, we thought we didn't, you know, violate their housing, um, there, there was this issue. And so rather than go to hearing, we settled. But, you know, the, the Civil Rights Commission is known for issuing huge fines. Yep. They're like worse than God. Huh? <laughs> They're worse than a judge. I mean, you just don't fight them. Right. You and, really want to stand They, can, they can be very obnoxious. And, um, uh, but, you know, and, and they offer, and, they may, and one of the things, too, is once they find that you go through settlement, they make you go through training. You know, so the That's implication right. is, well you, well, you were pretty stupid before. Otherwise, we would never have fined you. And therefore, as part of the settlement, your people have to be trained right. so that you don't make these mistakes again. Yep. And it includes even the managing agent had to be included in that training. Right. And so, I, you know, and I, I know with uh, the, civil, uh, the Hawaii Civil Rights <clears throat> Commission, they do all-day training. Yes. Yes. It's, uh, yeah. For it's, compliance. Right. It's arduous. It's long. Right. But anyway, uh, so this is why, you know, people, you know, you, if, if you're upset about the pets and condos, I mean, you want to make sure that your board uh, discusses all the issues with Association General Counsel and that you have a, a general counsel guiding you. First of all, you make, make sure your general counsel understands fair housing. Correct. Right? You, Correct. you need to, it means, and, and I, 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 it's unbelievable that in this day and age that there might be attorneys who represent condominiums that don't know that fair housing applies to condominiums. Uh, uh, and the a comparable law is ADA, which is the Americans for Dis with Disabilities, Disabilities Act. Act. Right. right. That applies to commercial buildings. So the ADA for residential buildings is fair housing. And, and so that tells you that, you know, you, you, you have to have allow certain repairs to be made uh, to accommodate, you know, disabled people. And you can't discriminate, you know, based on this protected class. Right. There's all of these rules. And it's so it's very, very complicated. And, and the fact that you might be living in a building uh, that is a no pets building, but somehow has all these animals running <laughs> around, uh, you know, you, you figure, wait a minute, why is the board doing this? Why can't the board stop it? Well, the, it, the, it's a little bit difficult. Yeah, it's very complicated. And um, you, really, you really walk that fine line in trying to enforce it a lot of times. And what, what we were talking about, too, before <clears throat> the show, we were talking about maybe prospective legislation, right? right? Yes. And, and, and this is something that the Hawaii Council would probably be in support of. And one thing is to probably set some guidelines as to who can write the letters right. asking for reasonable accommodation. Because right now, uh, it's, it's a whole, there's really no guidelines. And, and like, I, like I was telling you, you know, we denied a letter from a dentist, yeah. right? <laughs> Uh, we denied a letter from uh, the doctor in Lincoln, Nebraska, and we denied a letter, I think, that was five years old. Yeah. And, you know, so, you know, I guess, you know, for our, my, my, my association, it's got to be current. Within the last 90 days, the person's got to be a licensed professional in Hawaii, and they have to be treating the resident. Correct. They have to say in the letter, this is my client, this is my patient. Right. And this patient has a disability. And, I mean, we don't care what the disability is. We don't want to know. But they have to say that there's a disability and that this animal is going to alleviate symptoms of the disability, and they sign it. And I guess the issue is there's concern that some of the licensed professionals are maybe fudging when they write these letters. Yes, they are. Some of them are fraudulently writing these letters. Um, to assist, and some of them may not even be a, a, a professional, um, someone that they know is just trying to help somebody out and is writing a letter, but, it, but it's still not an appropriate type of letter to submit for someone. And, and in some cases, they're, the social workers can, and I, you know, until a couple of months ago, I didn't even know that they licensed social workers, right. but I, I was chastise and <laughs> I, I know now that in Hawaii we have licensed yep. social yep. workers. Licensed clinical social workers. Right. There. And when I saw one I said, wait a minute, you know, this this can't be. I, you know, so I, I called my friend who's a social worker and they said, Of course we're licensed. And uh, 
So anyway, um, yeah, so, you know, you, you can get a letter from a licensed social worker. Well, typically, that person should, should know you or have treated you at some point in time. You know, not just someone that you know. That's an LCSW, you know. Mm -hmm. It has to be someone that has treated you or is your case manager, you know. But even still, I would question whether they're really qualified because it comes under um, a mental health um, category. Right. And I think a lot of people, especially the people who grumble, who live in a no-pets building, and then they see all these animals coming in, and when they're told, oh, we, we have to give them a reasonable accommodation because they came with this letter, and it's like, oh, but, you know, they lied. It's fraud. They probably never went to the doctor. They just paid the doctor $50 to write that letter. They don't have, you know, they, mm -hmm. they don't have a, 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 a mental or physical condition that, right. where they need the animal. Right. And this is all bogus. And sometimes it is. I mean, I had someone that told me she needed her dog because the dog would tell her when she had an asthma attack. And I'm like, no. <laughs> that really isn't realistic. Yeah. But, you know, uh, you know I, I, I guess, you know, so that's why we're kind of looking at legislation, right? It is. To, it's to, really, to give it's, us guidelines as to, because for, for those of us who sit on boards and we, we get these letters, it's like, oh, my God. You know, it's like boiler Here's another plate. one. Here's another one. Here's another one. And, and then you have to figure out if the person is real, if they're actually licensed, if they're currently licensed. And, and a good thing about Hawaii is you can go online. Right. The, right. the, uh, at the DCCA, and you can find out who's licensed and who's not licensed. Yeah. And, but, you know, still that takes time. And, you know, it's like, why should we be checking? And, you know, so, uh, and, you, know, so you know, we should be, so, so there should be like a, a law that says who can write the request for reasonable accommodations and say what they have to put down. And if they're licensed, we need to have their license number. Correct. You Set know? the guidelines on um, who can, who cannot, um, what it should contain. Um, they're one of their, their clients or one of their patients should be the number ones on the list. Um, I mean, same rules as, like I was saying earlier, when you get a um, handicap pass, there's certain criteria in order to pass, to get a handicap pass. Mm -hmm. you know, so same thing with a um, service animal, should be the same type of guidelines. And so what would happen with this legislation? What would, what would, would there be sanctions? For people who issue these letters uh, and they're not authorized? I, I really think it is because they're, they're licensed professionals. So they, um, I mean, just like an attorney, if they do wrong, they can end up losing their license. So, so, so this would, so this would be, there's be a ethical violation standards. against their license. Yeah, yeah. Same principle, same thing. So the, the, the basically, if you write, write the letter, then, then you have to certify and attest to the fact that the, the, the person you're writing the letter for is, in fact, your patient and not somebody who just walked in the door and handed you $50 to write this letter. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Because okay? that's what everybody thinks. <laughs> but, and, you know, we've run out of time. And so uh, for those of you who want to follow this uh, topic, come to our seminar on November 14th at the Holly Co-op because uh, we're going to have uh, some uh, 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 professional psychologists a licensed psychologist, you know, they are talking about what can we do uh, to uh, address these issues that people have about pets and condos. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Raylene, for being with us. Thank you for having me. And uh, please uh, join us next week for another episode of Condo Insider. Thank you.